Right, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Dr. Paul Dakanai from the uh, Health Sciences Division where the nursing and public health programs are located. And I'm here to talk about the new uh, issue, health issue that's been emerging. And it, it has become a, an outbreak and there's an outbreak of this health issue. And it's known as the 2019 Novel Coronavirus. Okay, it's not the SOV virus that most of you have experienced last Friday, right? Some of you do, probably. The no cash on Valentine's virus last Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so this is different, okay? So basically, uh, this coronavirus which started from your, from, from your Wuhan, China, is actually uh, a, a, a simple, may have started as a something simple by a person buying a, uh, a food from a, an outdoor market. Okay? It started as that one, as simple as somebody who went to the animal, live animal market and brought something and ate it. And that's for now, okay, that is what they're trying to find out or confirm. Okay? What I'm going to be talking about here, I mean, the coronavirus is listed from the WHO website, so if you want to learn more, okay, go to the WHO website, okay, and if you want to ask more questions later on, I, you know where to find me. Okay, so, this was, this was first reported in December 2019, uh, there were a cluster of pneumonia cases, that was reported in the in the capital of Hubei province, which is the Wuhan city, okay, in China. And what they noted common among the patients was that they actually were uh, a, a they were at one of the uh, sea and seafood and live animal market at that time. Okay, so from there. Okay, from those sick person, it started to spread, okay, to family members, and also for those who were taking care of all the sick patients. So it spread that way. Okay. So from there, they tried to investigate about the virus, and they have identified anything similar to this virus. So they call it the, or although it said the, the features that it has when they isolated the virus, it shows that it belongs to the coronavirus group. So they call it the novel coronavirus, the 2019 coronavirus. So when we say coronavirus is actually a large group of viruses, okay, and it's commonly seen among mammals, okay, humans included, and birds. Okay, so what it looks like, okay, is that it's typical virus with a surrounding envelope. Okay, the genetic materials are there in, inside, and there are spikes of uh, proteins, okay, outside. And this gives it the crown look, okay? That's why they call it in, in, in Latin and in Spanish, actually, crown says corona. Okay. So they now call it your coronavirus. And again, the word novel is new, so now they call it the 2019 new coronavirus. Okay. New in the fact that, again, this was first, the first species, or the first coronavirus was actually, uh, was actually found way back in 1960. Okay. In way back in 1960, the first species of your coronavirus. Okay, and this virus has, from then on, have started, you know, giving, uh, causing respiratory and gastrointestinal diseases. Okay, so it may be in the form of coughing, shortness of breath, or diarrhea, okay, or abdominal pain. Okay, in regards to your respiratory disease, it can be as common or as mild as your common cold. You know, when you're sniffling and <coughs> coughing a little bit. Okay, the real sniffling and coughing, mm -hmm. and to the point that you would actually have pneumonia. To a more severe case, like what we had way back in 2002, which was the Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, or SARS. I don't know if you're aware of it, okay, but that's the same coronavirus. 
okay, only a different species. It's also, just recently, in 2012, we have another outbreak of a coronavirus infection, and it was in Saudi Arabia, so they call it the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. Okay? It's also because of the family of your coronavirus. Okay? So, where did this virus come from? Okay, so first and foremost, the term zoonotic means that it can actually be transmitted between an animal and a human. Okay, so it's between an animal and a human. It can be transferred by animals to humans. Okay, and there are a lot of this uh, virus that circulate in the range of the animals. And sometimes when the viruses jump from animals to humans, we call it the spillover. Okay, there's a spillover. That's the term that they use in epidemiology. Okay? And spillover is because of two things. One would be the mutation in the virus. So the virus characteristic change to the point that now it can actually infect humans. Okay? Another cause of the spillover is the increasing contact between humans and animals. And we were just talking about now uh, the, the change in the uh, global environment that we have lesser forests so now animals are starting to get into the city to get to the urban area okay and we have more contacts with these animals that might you know might have the specific coronavirus to cause the infection an example would be your SARS remember the severe severe acute respiratory syndrome in 2003 your SARS uh, coronavirus, okay, it came from the civet cat. So it started in China again. Uh, there were several exposure, and then they developed the SARS. Your Middle East respiratory syndrome is actually from the camel. Okay, so it's starting to evolve. Okay, so the present one, the novel coronavirus, they're still trying to determine the exact. Okay, the exact cause or the exact reservoir of this virus. And just going back a little bit, okay, if you would look at the different genuses or genera of your virus, okay, you have four, but your alpha and the beta are the most common ones. Okay, your alpha is actually the, your alpha and beta are found in mainly in the Bats. That's why you can hearing uh, news news. Okay, that they said, oh, those those Chinese ate the live bat. Okay, it doesn't have to be eaten. Okay, again, we'll know that the, how it actually spreads. Okay, but yeah, eating the flesh of an infected bat can be the cause. Okay, so your. Uh, your alpha one, okay. Your alpha, okay. Your alpha coronavirus are seen, okay. This are this is a a virus that can also be seen among cats and dogs. So we have the coronavirus K9, and we also have the coronavirus for your cats. Okay, so it's common, your feline coronavirus and your canine coronavirus. Okay, but again, later on, we would see that, yeah, although it's found, coronavirus is found in your, in your cats and dogs, that doesn't mean that you have to kill your cats and dogs right now, okay? So this is the alpha, okay? The beta one, okay, the beta one is the one that causes your severe acute respiratory syndrome, your Middle East respiratory syndrome, and they're also pointing to your beta as the cause of this present outbreak. Yeah. So who are at risk? Okay. We know those people who are living within that outbreak area, plus those people who were traveling from that area would be the group that is at most risk. Okay. People who are in contact with these animals, that's why they're, again, they have, they have uh, uh, pointed to that specific animal market as the source of the virus. 
So they are saying that close contact with animal reservoirs would be common or would be a group at risk. So those who are in that market. And people who are caring for those who are infected. Okay, the healthcare workers. Just like what happened in SARS before. It actually wasn't, it, it actually didn't become an outbreak until it spread through the health workers. Okay, so the number increased when they were when the health workers were caring for those who were infected. And of course, older people and people with pre-existing condition. And again, if you would look at the mortality of this of this virus, it's mostly those who are older and with pre-existing medical condition. They are sick already. They have diabetes, they have heart disease. They have asthma, because again, it's a respiratory, and those with cancer, because their immune system is down. Okay? So how do we transmit it? Okay? So although for this specific coronavirus, they haven't really pointed to how it is spread, but based on what they learned okay, from the previous coronavirus outbreak, they know that it is spread through droplets okay, via sneezing or coughing. Yeah. So when people sneeze, how far do you think this, the, the droplets go, travel? It can go as far as 6 meters. Okay, so from here, if I sneeze, probably those in the middle can still be affected by it. I'm affected by it, my droplets. Okay? Although, again, other form of Transmission would be contaminated objects. Okay, if I have the virus and I started sneezing here, okay, I have droplets in, in on this table, and here you are asking me, don't put it. You hold it, and then, ah, okay, now you have the virus. Okay, so it's called your fomites. Okay, so non-living organism can also be a vehicle for the virus. Okay including your doorknobs. Okay? Including the doorknobs. These are fomites. So we define fomites as objects that are capable of transmitting infections such as your skin cells. So what does it mean? Your bedding. Okay? So if you, especially for those staying in the residence hall, if you love, you know, you would like to stay in some other bed, Okay, it can be a source of an infection. Okay, so stay within your your own bed, right? Okay, so clothing, hair, and bedding materials, and of course, most commonly your doorknob. Okay, but again, preliminary in, uh, information reports that those droplets can actually survive, or the virus can only survive for a few hours outside the body. Okay, few hours outside the body. Incubation period. Incubation period is the time when you are exposed or you got infected to the time that you would start showing symptoms of the disease. That's your incubation period. And again, based on their estimate from what's happening right now, they found out that there's an average of 1 to 12 and a half days with a median of six, 5 to 6 days. That means that when you are exposed, Okay, majority within six days they would show signs and symptoms of the disease already. Okay, but okay, but on previous coronavirus disease like your MERS and your SARS, it averaged 14 days. That's why they quarantine you for 14 days because they want to see you after 14 days if you would develop the symptoms of the disease. If not, then you're okay. Okay, but usually it would by 14 days it would be there. That means that you have it. If it's not there, if you won't have the symptoms, then that means that you're okay. okay that's why 14. Okay? And it varies between infection. Okay? So quarantine. Do you know where the word quarantine originated from? Okay? It, it's from the word quarantine, which means 40 days. Because in the olden times, before they let a ship dock, okay? they would hold them offshore for 40 days to make sure that whatever disease that ship is carrying okay, would be gone and then they would be allowed to dock. Okay, so it's from the word quarenta. But now, 
with advanced technology, we know that different infections have different incubation period, and we don't need to quarantine everybody for 40 days. Okay. So what are the symptoms? What are what would be your your feature, or what would be the symptom of this disease? How would you know that somebody might have the disease? Well, it ranges from a mild fever to about to a coughing and a little bit shortness of breath to as severe as having pneumonia, meaning that you would start to have productive cough, high fever, and shortness of breath to kidney failure and death. It can cause that, especially again for older people and for those with pre-existing diseases, medical condition. Diagnosis, confirmatory diagnosis, we can only confirm the diagnosis of your novel coronavirus if we actually get a swab and put it in a machine called your polymerase chain reaction or PCR reaction, and then it would now identify the DNA footprint. Okay, unfortunately, we don't have this capability in MSM. Okay. And only if, only yeah, some of the specimen they would send it to to Australia and Japan and I think in the mainland they do have your PCR. Okay. But for us it's mostly our signs and symptoms. We would rely on clinical history and signs and symptoms. How do we treat your coronavirus? Symptomatically. We have this term we call symptomatically. If you're coughing, we'll give you something for your cough. If you have fever, we'll give you something for your fever, and that also would be good enough if you would have body pains and joint pains. Because this is a virus, it would it would present as a flu-like syndrome. Muscle pain, joint pains, fever, headaches. Okay? And we treat them accordingly. There is no vaccine yet. Okay, Everybody's now <coughs> trying to come out with a vaccine for the virus, and Antibiotics, okay? Antibiotics won't work to either prevent or treat your coronavirus, okay? Antibiotic is for bacterial infection. We're talking about viruses, okay? So if you would, unless of course, okay, you would be hospitalized because of a severe complication of your coronavirus, then you might be given an antibiotic. Otherwise, if you would be presenting with fever, cough, runny nose, then you don't need antibiotics. Okay. Something else with the treatment. Okay, These are some of the things that we thought would actually help. I know a lot of people are talking about vitamin C. Right? Vitamin C is a no-no for viruses. Especially once you have the signs and symptoms. Okay, it has something to do with the uh, airways. Okay, you will have airways there. Your 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 bronchial tube have hairs in there that would put push push out the mucus. That's why again in the morning you would have the mucus because normally you would, your lungs would clean itself. Vitamin C would decrease okay, the motility of those ciliary or the hair cells. Okay, so what will happen is that everything would stay within your lung. Okay, so no vitamin C. Okay. Of course, smoking okay, is also prohibited. Okay, same reason it would have something to do with the movement of your hair cells. And of course, uh, some of your traditional herbal teas and of course, antibiotics. You should not be taking this because it's unnecessary. Question so far? Yes, sir. So, um, why is it that antibiotics aren't effective for a virus? What's the difference between well, bacterial infections and well, viral Well, most infections? your bacteria, the antibiotics mostly target what we call the cell walls, which is only present in bacteria. So, usually, antibiotic would destroy that cell wall and be able to, you know, the cytoplasm and everything else would come out and you would kill the bacteria. Viruses doesn't have the cell wall. Although they would have the protein envelope, but it's made of different molecules that antibiotics won't work. So that's why it's not effective. Any other question? 
clarification. Okay, so if we cannot treat it, what would be the best way to manage this one? Of course, prevention would still be the best cure for this one. Number one would be washing your hands frequently. Okay, right now, frequent washing of the hands, either using your soap and water or a an alcohol-based rub. Okay, at least 60% of alcohol. Okay. And again, your hand sanitizers, as long as it has about 60% alcohol content, then it can work. Okay. Remember, we're talking about virus, so it would work. It would work to prevent it. Okay. What else? Practicing your respiratory hygiene. And okay, we now we don't recommend you, you know, cover your mouth when you're coughing or sneezing. Okay. So what will happen there is that you would bring the viruses or the any pathogen on your hands. And here you are touching somebody else, touching the doorknob. Okay, you can spread it. So what is recommended if you're gonna use a tissue, use a tissue but make sure you dispose it properly in a closed bin. Okay, if you don't have any tissue, make sure you sneeze on your elbow. Okay, or your if you're, again, you, if you're gonna use tissue, make sure you dispose of it properly and again practice hand hygiene. Okay, so hand hygiene and respiratory hygiene is the most most basic preventive measure you can do. Okay? Question on that one. Okay. What else? Okay. Maintain social distancing. Okay. I was mentioning about six meters, right? Okay. But of course, we don't open the right. So basically, if you teach everybody how to do their respiratory hygiene, then you can stay, you know, about one meter distance from each other. Okay. So that's about three feet three tiles away okay, from each other so that's one foot per tile so that's three count okay about a meter away okay try to avoid shaking hands okay hugging okay? and teasing people especially those who are coughing and having sneezing and having fever okay so we love the you know, we love hugging. Okay, at this time, okay, just a preventive measure. We try to avoid it now. Okay, and then if you do your hand hygiene and your respiratory hygiene, again, observe. Okay. Oh. Okay. When to use a mask? Remember, your medical mask cannot protect you alone. Okay, you still have to practice your hand and respiratory hygiene. Okay, you don't need to to wear a mask when you are healthy. Okay, because again, it's not a hundred percent protection. Okay, we, even if you use the mask. Okay. When are you going to use a mask? Your, well, mask would be recommended if you are having cough, fever, and difficulty of breathing. Okay? But make sure you seek medical care. So when you are having it, you wear your mask. Okay? This is to isolate, or what we call reverse isolation. You're, you're isolating yourself from the, your peers. Okay? So, again, you don't have to wear masks. Unless we would identify somebody in this room that is coughing and having fever, then everybody should wear one. Okay? But otherwise, okay, if you're healthy, no need to wear a mask. Okay? WHO has been emphasizing this one because they're running, you know, pharmacy or suppliers are running out of masks already. Okay? And again, for those who would really need it, like those people who are in that uh, area in China, they really need it. Okay, we should concentrate supply in that area rather than bringing it to Micronesia, where we don't even have one case yet. Okay. 
right? So that's the thing. So again, and then if you are taking care of a person who may have the virus, then you wear your mask, okay? So again, just to emphasize, if you do not have the symptoms, you do not need to wear a mask. There is no evidence that the mask itself can protect people who are not sick. Okay? Just give it to somebody who really, really needs it. Okay? So, how do you use a mask? Okay? Before you put your mask on, okay, you have to, again, practice your hand hygiene. Okay? So, either hand, wash your hands with soap and water, or again, an alcohol-based rub. Okay. And make sure when you use the mask, you cover the mouth and nose with no gas. Gas. Okay. So when you put the medical mask, put it to cover everything, including your chin and your nose. Okay. That's the best way. That's the way to use it. Okay. If you're using the mask, avoid touching it. Okay. If you touch the front of the mask, again, you have to do your hand hygiene. Okay, wash or use scrub. Because if we are in an area where we have the virus, then definitely most of the pathogens would be on the front of the mask. And if you touch it, again, you would be able to spread it by your hands. Okay? Uh, you replace your mask if it's done already. Again, this is a one-time use. It's disposable. That means that after using, you... Dispose it, and again, when disposing it, you have to make sure you dispose it properly. It is in a closed bin, okay, specifically for the purpose. Okay, and then again, wash hands. Okay, you need to wash your hands. This is not the way to use your mask. <laughs> okay, some of our former students. We're so happy sending us this picture, putting it on top. So, I told them that I'm gonna make you as an example. Okay? And this is a waste of resource. Okay? So, some of the myths. Okay? Again, I spoke about antibiotics. You don't need antibiotics. It's only for bacterial infection, not for viral infection. Okay? Again, Otherwise, uh, or if you get admitted, probably you would need antibiotic if you have a co-infection. Like, if you start to develop bacterial pneumonia, then they would give you an antibiotic when you're admitted at the hospital. Okay. Otherwise, for plainly coronavirus, you don't need antibiotic. We spoke about people, or we talk about people who are susceptible. It's not only the adult. I mentioned older people and people with... Uh, comorbid, uh, comorbid diseases, it's not any age can be susceptible. Okay? It doesn't choose any age. Oh, you're 18, I won't infect you. No. Everybody would actually be infected. Yeah? So, again, hand hygiene and good respiratory hygiene. Washing your hands, covering your mouth and nose when you're sneezing with your elbow. Yeah? This is one myth that I read okay, a lot. <clears throat> Spraying of alcohol and chlorine. It won't help. Okay, it won't help. Actually, if you spray yourself with alcohol and chlorine, it can be detrimental or it can actually have a rever or a, a, a different effect on you. Okay? It can be harmful. Okay, but you can use your chlorine, your bleach. You know what? Well, chlorine is actually your bleach. Okay, you can use this to disinfect surfaces. Okay? Remember, the virus can stay outside of the body for a few hours. Okay, so make sure that you have a clean environment. Okay, always clean your environment. This is another one, and this has become a worry. Oh, they won't allow the ship. To, pay, to bring in the stuff. We won't have any supply, grocery supplies because they won't allow the ship. Well, it would take the ship from China to FSM about a month 
before coming in, and the virus would only be alive outside of the body in a few hours. Okay, so there's no danger in there. Okay, so again, that's why they would still allow the ship to come in. It's actually here today, right? It's scheduled on the 17th of anyway, December. Just for your information. So again, it's not. It won't. Okay, so you can still receive package from your friends in China, or you can allow containers to come in from China because we don't expect the virus to be that large. Okay? Okay, can pets at home spread the new coronavirus? As of present, according to the WHO website, there's still no evidence that, again, your coronavirus uh, A, okay, your alpha coronavirus, okay, found in your cats and dog can actually, or it hasn't mutated yet to affect humans. Okay, so it's still safe. But, again, practice hand hygiene after playing with your pets. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is this is a respiratory infection. So, do you think that your vaccine for your pneumonia would be effective in preventing it? It's not. Okay. Vaccines are specific for a type of virus only. Okay. So your pneumococcal, your H HIV vaccines. It won't work against your coronavirus until the time that we would or somebody would come up with a vaccine against specifically your 2019 novel coronavirus. Then that would be effective. Otherwise, we don't have any vaccine available. Yeah. Uh, can gargling mouthwash protect you from infection with the new coronavirus? Uh, again, there's no evidence about it. Okay, uh, most of the mouthwash available in the market have specific mm -hmm. microorganisms that they are targeting, and for sure, it doesn't have the 2019 novel coronavirus in there. Okay, or even your SARS virus. Okay, so it's most simple. But again, you can just practice oral hygiene, right? Okay. Here's another one, garlic. Okay, we've known garlic as having an antibiotic feature. Okay, it's good. You can use it directly on wounds or you can actually eat it raw and it would help lower down the blood pressure and it has an antibiotic property too. But is it effective against your coronavirus? It's not. Okay, it's not. Okay. So, one more myth. Okay, your corona beer doesn't spread the coronavirus. Okay, I, I thought nobody would actually believe it, but I met several people who said they believe it. I said no. So you would have your Budweiser virus later on. Okay. Any questions?